guys, what's up? It's Austin here from Royal Highness Pythons, and in today's video, I'm going to be putting away a clutch, but not only that, I'm going to show you how I set up my egg bins. And right behind you, me, <laughs> you might notice my vermiculite here, and basically, we're going to be filling up a bin because we have a clutch of eggs. This is my Mojave Spider. She could possibly be Het Monsoon. I'm hoping for, fingers crossed. I might be reaching a bit, but still, it's good to dream. And she was bred to my special Het Pied, who's also possible Het Monsoon, but it's not so much of a stretch with him because he came from Billy, and Billy's line has produced monsoons, and he looks just like the same special Het Monsoon that produced Billy's Leopard Monsoon. So, fingers crossed that she proves out as well. So. Let's get right into that. And before I do that, I just want to do a huge shout out to MJ Designs. Look at this really cool shirt she made me. And she's over there in the UK. This is also her snake page or her reptile page, Jungle Genetics. And here's MJ Designs. And she's definitely did not leave me slacking on the back. Whole bunch of cool slogans there. King Austin. Real nice. Thanks again, MJ. So if you're not checking her out already, go check her on Instagram, MJ Designs. It should be around here, but right now, so go check that out. And let's get right into this video. So this is my setup. I just use a big bin. I use a light diffuser that's cut just so it could fit inside the bin. A little space on each side, about an inch. So when the snakes do come out, they're not directly on top of this. They do go to the sides, and then I take this out after. So first things first, I gotta add the vermiculite. Some people use perlite, hatchrite. Vermiculite works fine, it's really cheap. And this is the brand I use. It's Holiday, or Holiday. I don't know why I said it funny. It's pretty big, 113 liters. So you can get these fairly cheap at any garden store or hydroponics shop. So what I do for these big bins, I grab it, I use a deli cup to scoop. I get about four or five scoops, depending on the bin. This one might be five. I'm just straight to the top, maybe a little over the top. Three. Four. Let's see how this looks. Some people would use this. It's about three quarters of an inch up the way. I just want to get it just to that inch mark so it holds humidity better. Maybe just a bit more. That looks perfect. And that there. So now that we got all the vermiculite in here, and it's about an inch up the way of the bin. Want to make sure we see where this sits. It's gonna sit right there. It's gonna even it out a bit. When I add the water, it's gonna become uneven again. It's just easier to add, even out a bit before and even out after than just after. So here I have some lukewarm water, and I'm basically just gonna go. I start by filling the edges. And then I work my way through the middle. You guys might be wondering how much water I add. So basically, if you take a look at the side, there's no water accumulation yet. And I like to see a little bit of water accumulation when the bin is flat just so I know there's enough water for the whole 55 or 56 day cycle that they're going to be in there. And right here, if you take a look, you'll see about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch, there is water. And if I turn it over, you can really see the water accumulating. I just like to go and move the water around the whole bin, make sure that everything is wet it takes sometimes takes a minute for the water to get to the bottom 
that looks like just enough water. Again, we have that water accumulation. And this bin has some reservoirs right here, so there's a little more water than I need, which is perfect. And since I use a light diffuser, it doesn't really matter how much water I put, as long as the water does not exceed the height of the, the mesh right here. So right now we're going to go and pull the clutch and put it inside. So stay tuned. Here she is. She looks like she has a few eggs on her, maybe like seven or eight, maybe ten. Okay, maybe ten. Let's count. And when you're grabbing the female, you always want to grab her by the tail because they do hook the eggs and you don't want any to flip, fall, or roll. And as you can tell, she is all out of eggs. And she's quite calm because she laid this this morning and it's about five o'clock or six o'clock now and really cool that she's calm against because usually they'd be really feisty and let's just take a quick count one two three four five six seven eight nine wow so nine eggs nine possibilities at a monsoon hopefully so now I'm just gonna go wash the female real quick off camera and then we're gonna get these ripped apart and put them inside of the bin so here's the female, she's all washed up now. We just got her cage all clean, some fresh water. So we have the eggs right over here. And we're gonna just get them cleaned up a bit because as you can tell, there's a lot of cocoa fiber on them as well as they're a little wet at the bottom. The female grabs a little bit of water while she's holding the eggs just to keep them moist. But in this case, since we're putting them in the incubator, we don't need that moisture. So, let's start tearing them apart. I'm not as good as Billy is at this, but I've had some practice. He makes it look a lot easier. But, I just want to keep the eggs all intact. right left to right I might do a time lapse for this but if you're hearing this I definitely did not do a time lapse damn these last ones are really stuck together so as you can see there's a lot of points where especially this egg one two three points that is attached to the other eggs and they're pretty big points too, so don't get discouraged, keep attacking it from different angles and hopefully they come apart like that, so. Oh, looks like we got a little hole. So, if you give me one second, I have to go grab some tape, but if you zoom in right here, you can see there's a little hole in there. I am prepared. So all you gotta do when you get a little hole, if you haven't seen Billy's videos already, just get some scotch tape. And I'm just gonna go. Actually, it looks like we got two holes. One I didn't notice earlier. If you look right here, there's a little hole right there. So all I'm gonna do is take this napkin, take a little dab, get it off the area, and take this piece of tape. Just make sure it's well over not to leak any fluid out so now if you take a look a little holes right there a little bit of tape then do no egg no harm and basically let's try getting this egg off before i tape it okay so here and i'm gonna tape this egg right now just because when I'm moving all these eggs around, I don't want any more fluid to come out. I might have to retape it after. I'm not going to be too sure at this moment, but let's take every precaution necessary to ensure this egg makes it. So right there, this piece of tape right over. Let's get these two apart. There we go. This one's just coming right off real nice. Again, one of these little risky attachments. You could just use your nail. Another thing you could do is put your thumb right up against the part so it has a less chance of actually ripping. 
there's more support and kind of push down in the opposite direction you're rolling so you can see it's working very well here and there we go and actually i didn't even need to retape this let's just make sure there's no other holes we look good and this one we look good so very happy about that you see here we have two four six eight nine eggs i'm just gonna grab a new napkin just lightly dust off all the cocoa that I can get off. Some of the cocoa is attached on and still wet. So I will have to just let those stay there. So there's the first egg. And don't do it over the bin either. Just so that the stuff doesn't fall back into the bin. The idea is to get the least amount of cocoa inside of the bin as possible, just to decrease the chances of molding. This one looks pretty good now. Put it in like that. And after the video, I'm gonna come back and candle it. I already made a video on candling, so if you haven't seen that, go look at my last clutch putting away. And this egg looks really good too. This one right here. But I'll explain candling. So basically, in candling, what you are gonna do is try to find the embryo inside of the snake, inside of the egg, sorry. And basically the embryo is what forms into a snake. And usually it's at the middle of the pocket of veins on the egg. So if you put a torch or a light to it, you can definitely go and tell exactly uh, where the embryo is. And you want that facing upwards. So if you get it facing upwards, the chances of success in that egg are a lot higher. If it's on the side, it could still make it, but when it's upside down, it usually drowns the embryo and it does not make it. Sometimes you can see people just taking the whole bunch of eggs and just plopping it into the incubator, into the bin, I mean, and then putting it in the incubator. That is good if you can do it, if your bin is tall enough. With this bin, I might have gotten away with it, but once again, not all the eggs are going to be in the right rotation. That's why sometimes you have eggs molded out. So, best thing to do is just take them all apart. You might do this and make a little hole, but scotch tape fixes it up perfectly. And you'll have yourself a really nice looking clutch like this. Actually, I'm going to set this one right there. So, I'm going to go and candle these right now. Scotch tape just saved me. Thank you, scotch tape. Not sponsored by them. That'd be cool if I was. That's not gonna happen, I'm not that big yet. I don't even think I'll be that big, who knows. So, drop a like on this video if you liked it. And if you wanna see the candling, make sure to go check my last video. I'll add an annotation to it at the end of the, this video. So, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.